Hello and welcome to this episode of the Star Wars Generations podcast. Today, it's Aaron's world. It's just me, guys. I am here by myself, talking to myself, and I'm honestly really excited about it because it's a topic I love so much, and you all know how deeply I care about this. We're here today to talk about The Bad Batch, the final season. <sighs> the crowd goes wild. Oh my gosh, guys, I cannot explain to you how excited I am for this. Like, The Bad Batch came to me... Oh, okay. I don't know why I'm going to go into this, but I'm going to. The Bad Batch came to me during a time where I was just really alone and needing some, like, encouragement. And I'd been rewatching The Clone Wars when the first season came out. And I just really, like, latched onto these characters. And they've come to mean so much to me. And I'm really excited for this third season, regardless of what happens. Um, I'm hoping for a few different things, but we'll get into that later. And don't worry, this is going to be spoiler-free. I won't mention anything from the trailer. Um, but yeah, so last season... We had a lot of, we had a lot going on. So let's do a quick review here. First and foremost, rest in peace to our king tech. Moment of silence. I'm kidding. I'm not going to do that on a podcast by myself. Um, I miss him though. Tech dying was really hard for me, and I think hard for a lot of people. And I know there's been a lot of back and forth. People are like, did he die? Is he actually dead? People don't really die, die in Star Wars, which is also honestly pretty pretty valid thoughts just based on everything that's happened thus far in Star Wars. But I do personally think that Tech is gone, and I think that it's staying that way is better for the people the plot and for the fans because if you hit us with something that hard and then you bring him back in the next season like it cheapens everything that was so hard about his death um so yeah it's something i wanted to get out of the way right away um poor tech love him miss him i will watch the first two seasons with joy in my heart um also what was happening omega got yoinked by the empire um and brought to this place with dr hemlock and this bitch emery who i mean honestly like at first you know what honestly just fuck this girl i was never on she's cool i mean i guess we'll see but the fact that she's another clone and is doing this two clones like i don't i don't fuck with that i don't like it i don't like it i don't like it the clones are all about loyalty they're about their brothers and now they're sisters and she's just in here messing it all up so I guess we'll see what happens with her. Um, let's see. We left Father Cross, our cross daddy, Mr. Crosshair, alone. Um, he's just kind of, I believe he was like, I don't know. Things ended bad for him. He's alone. Him and Omega are kept in the same area, however. So we're going to hopefully see some sort of interaction between them in this next season. Um, what else? Yeah, so where we left off with the rest of the squad here, the boys, I don't know what's going to happen with them. The boys being um the dads. Well, I guess dad and mom, Hunter and Echo. It's just, oh my God, it's just dad and mom left. Um, ouch. But now they have Fee, who, poor Fee. Oh my God. Watching her and Tech get closer last season and season two was so beautiful. And like to see someone who truly understood him for what he was and understood the way that he communicated and didn't hold anything against him when it came out sideways, like it is going to be really hard to see her this season. And at the same time, I'm really excited to see her because I love a story of someone who prevails. It's one of my favorite phrases. Alas, I shall prevail. I say that to all myself all the time when I'm just, like, busy with homework. Um, but I think it's, like, a motto that should apply in life. And, yeah, so I'm just really excited to see what they do with Fee in Season 3. Um, yeah, other things in Season 2? We got Rio Chuchi back, guys. Um, this was a huge moment for me also because, like, Rio and Ahsoka were just so close in the Clone Wars. And as a young kid, like, I latched onto those episodes and really any strong female presence in Star Wars because there wasn't that many, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, so I've always really loved Rio and how young and confident she is and getting to see her again with the clones. I hope we get to see more follow-up on that in season three. Again, these are all just my hopes. Um, But she is such a baddie. Like, I just want to see her so bad. And honestly, okay, I'm just going to get into my predictions while I'm going through the list of what happened. It's not really a prediction. It's a headcanon, something I want so much. I want Fox. Commander Fox. Is a commander or a captain? I'm going to get screamed at. Um, anyways, but in a lot of fanfic and like uh, comic books and arts, um, Rio Chuchi and Fox are kind of like a thing. And it comes out really cute. And that's my personal headcan, something I would like to see at some point. Um, I seriously doubt that will happen, but you know. It's all you can do. Okay, it's, it's a clone commander. Sorry for that long bit of silence. I just had to know. Yeah, so personal little, little thing. I mean, we'll never get it, but I would love to see Rio Chuchi and Commander Fox because they are just so cute um, together because she's all like, aw. But like, puts him in his place and he's all like, you know, the way clones are and the reason that I'm obsessed with them. Um, anyways, so somebody else we got to see this last season, Cody, Commander Cody. It was, oh my God, the episode with him was so good. That episode with Crosshair brought so much, like, thought to me. Like, there was just so much happening. Okay, I hope you've seen season two if you're listening to this. But, um... Crosshair and Cody go on this, like, strike team-style mission together. And um, it goes well, whatever, they, like, win. But Crosshair, like, shoots somebody where Cody was trying to reason with them. And Cody ends up deserting the Empire um, right after that. So I would love to see if Cody's kind of, like, in the underground community of the clones with, like, Rex and the Dad Batch and you know, Hauser and the folks that Rio has helped um, escape and kind of get into a new life. I want to see more of them. I want to see more Hauser, Hauser, Hauser. I love him and I love him. Um, And just getting to see, I don't know. I'm curious to what the boys are going to do because we have like Gregor and Captain Rex and Rio that are doing this thing for like, clone troopers as a whole but the boys were kind of like no we have to do our own thing for omega but now i'm wondering if they're gonna i don't know meet up with them a little bit i think it would be interesting to see like strike team echo gregor hunter rex cody (sighs) dream team um anyways This last season, we got some of the most beautiful character growth in Tech and the relationship he shared with Omega, specifically in that one episode where they're trapped in a mine together and shortly after Echo has decided to step away from the team to help his brothers elsewhere, Omega takes it really hard and we get to see that other side of Tech that's always been laughed at, or the... Just the side of him that's never been understood about how, like, unfeeling and, you know, quote, technical he can be. Um, So that was really beautiful to see. And I hope that we keep getting deep dives like that into our other characters here. I would love to know. Like, I just want to know more about Echo. Like, I just want to hear about his trauma deeply. And that's probably just because I want to hurt myself with that knowledge because I miss Fives so much and Hard Case and Jesse and all of the 501st. And I just, yeah, I kind of want to see that. Um, Something else that happened in season two, Commander Mayday. Like I... Didn't know I had a thing for men with beards until he walked on the screen. Okay, that's not true. We did see um, Gregor with a beard in the Clone Wars, and that was, not going to lie, pretty salt and pepper daddy. Um, so the same with Commander Mayday. He was just the the height of clone creation. 
character design, character design. <laughs> There's that's those word. That's the word I'm looking for, guys. Um, yeah, I'm just excited to see. I know May Day is gone, but I'm excited to see more clone designs this season because all I I just want clones. You guys know this about me. I just love clones. I just want more clones. Um, so yeah, I'm really hoping to see some other really cool characters. You know, hopefully with facial hair. I'm not mad about that. To be honest with you. Um, something else that happened in season two that was pretty interesting, or at least interesting for me, caught my attention, was the Zillow Beast episode. I'm just curious to see, and I think it's going to tie in very well with what's happening with um, Omega and Crosshair, but I don't know. I haven't watched season two recently, and I probably won't have time to before season three, just because I am working two jobs with school. I'm just really having a hard time, guys. So um, I do my best to watch the content that we're going to be talking about right away, but I don't always have time to, like, prep a whole season. Um, But, yeah, I just think it'll be interesting to see where that goes, you know, trying to recreate the impenetrable skin of the Zillow Beast and what um, Palpatine might have planned for it or what Hemlock has planned. There's lots of plans going on that I want to know about. Um, last moment that I have on here as a really big moment was that when Crosshair tried to escape the Empire and actually reached out to the Bad Batch to warn them that the Imperials wanted Omega. And I'm going to be honest, guys, I can't remember if the Bad Batch got it, but I'm pretty sure they did. Or maybe they did didn't and that is something that we will all find out in season three together because i couldn't find it in a quick google search so that's just a little bit of mystery i get to live with here um oh a little rumor this isn't a spoiler because i've only heard it as like rumors from people i don't know i'll say this but if it's too spoilery we'll take it out but i really hope we get to see captain wolf commander wolf kill me commander wolf um because just the wolf pack plo they're all very dear to my heart and i would love to see commander wolf and what he's doing and just how it's affected him how order 66 has affected him because he was always such an interesting character so i really hope we get to see him as kind of a final hope and thought um other than that I wish I had more prepped for you guys, but I just, I just wanted to get on here and say a little something because we've been really busy lately, all three of us, and we weren't able to like get a full episode in for this primer, but I just wanted to like at least say my piece, you know, like I got so much to say about clones. I will talk all day and, but I'm going to keep it to under 20 minutes today for you guys (laughs) for the sake of your hearts and souls. Um, so yeah, um, just wanted to do a little prep for season three. Um, so we will be covering season three every Friday. Um, every single episode of that we'll be talking about Don't You Worry, because the clones have to be discussed. Um, the nice thing about that, though, is that we're going to be recording kind of late Thursday night. So if you guys have any thoughts about the episode, if you watch it before then, you can feel free to DM me um, on Instagram. I'm at Lady Tano Creates. Just go ahead and put, like, if you're going to say something based on an episode that just came out, just put spoiler warning, like in all caps, and just go to the next line so that if I'm at work and I haven't watched the episode yet, I can, like, know not to read that message yet. Um, But, yeah, so feel free to reach out to me about that stuff. I am your go-to girl for clone, all things clone considered. Um, and I mean, I guess at any point we can chat about the episode in the discord, but if you want to hear what we have to say and then talk about it more, it'll be out on Fridays. Um, yeah, so we just love talking to you guys and sharing these things that are happening in the moment with you. Cause like as a star Wars community, this sounds dumb, but like as a star Wars community, we're all like experiencing this new show together. And so as much fun as it is to sit here and talk to myself about it (laughs) for 20 minutes or so and 
as much fun as it is to hear like Matthew and Alex's thoughts on it every single week. You know, I've said in the Discord how much I don't even realize till we hit record and then we're talking about it, the three of us, and it's just so much more clicks. And it's so interesting. And I so love being able to talk about it, the three of us, and share it with you guys. But we want to hear what you have to say too. So seriously, please write in to us. You can always DM me, same place, Lady Tano Creates is a great place to say anything. To us, uh, that is all going to be in the show notes. At the end of the day, we just want to hear from you guys. So, you know, send us emails, message me on Instagram. You can hit up Matthew or Alex on Twitter. I think they're both maybe a little more active there than I am. Or absolutely hop in our Discord. It's all in the show notes. Uh, We want to hear from you guys. We want to chat with you guys. And if you just can't get enough of the three of us and the interesting stuff we have to say, or today, just me and the interesting things I have to say, we do have a members section or club, I guess you could call it. But it's $5 a month or $55 a year just for bonus content every episode or most episodes. Um, Like I said before, I can be incredibly busy and sometimes I just don't have the time to do the prep work for that and I have to drop out for episodes or sometimes that happens for the other person, you know. So you can join our members club for $5 a month or $55 a year. You get bonus content after almost every episode where we talk about just anything. But right now, lately, we've been going through the From a Certain Point of View book um, that's on A New Hope. So it's just telling A New Hope from a bunch of different random stories. That being said, we do sprinkle in some other things. So we're doing a monthly book club episode. It's a full-length episode, not just a bonus content. And we talk about a book. And depending on what's happening in the Star Wars community, if there's things releasing, we'll talk about certain books. If you guys have books to request, again, just reach out. It's on the show notes. Um, But yeah, so if you want to join our members section, (laughs) like I said, you get bonus content, you get ad-free content, and then you get access to our book club. Uh, which I am going to talk about next. But if you're just here on Spotify or Apple Music or wherever you listen, also please give us five stars or thumbs up or whatever it is. Um, We love the support. (laughs) But thank you so much for listening, and we have spoken. That's all, Camino. Hello and welcome to this episode of the... Star Wars Universe Podcast. <laughs> Let me take that again. You almost now, said you know, superhero at the <laughs> keep, going, keep going. Look, it has been a rough couple of weeks, folks, and I apologize for that in advance. We have a couple of episodes in the backlog. Uh, Aaron and I did a quick response to Bad Batch. Sorry, Aaron and I did a quick response to Mando Episode 8, and then Ashley and I recorded one on Friday night. I, I wanted to get it done as quickly as we could. We had to wait till Friday, and then... Some life stuff came up. I wasn't able to edit it, and I still haven't edited it because it's Sunday night because then I spaced on it because life has been a lot lately. But, excuse me, today we are back. Myself, Aaron McGowan, are joined by returning host, guest, not really a host, sort of a host, Paul Hoppy. And we're not talking about Mando. We're going to be talking about the full season of Bad Batch. We're doing a season review. What did we love? What did we not like? Uh, who looked best? Whose ass looked best in the clone armor? Uh, all the things. Um, Paul's giving a confused look because he's not been listening as much as he, they should have been. But that's okay. You're here listening. We're going to have a great time right after these commercial breaks that maybe Elon Musk is in control of. I don't know. Minnesota State offers students an affordable, life-changing education. And with the Minnesota State Promise, tuition is frozen through 2025. Find your perfect fit at one of the 54 campuses of Minnesota State. Learn more at minnstate.edu. I'm here today with Dr. Jarvis of Minneapolis Plastic Surgery. If someone's listening right now and they've been tossing the idea of plastic surgery back and forth and trying to decide if it's the right choice for them, what would you say to them to encourage them to come in for that free consultation? Meet me, meet the staff, learn about it, and you'll have the information. And if it's something you want to do, you can pursue it. If not, no harm, no foul. You just hopefully met another nice person. You have before and after photos to show people as well. We do. Set up that complimentary consultation at mpsmn.com. Welcome back. I'm Matthew, your host. They, them pronouns. I'm joined as 
pretty much with all things Bad Batch by Lady Tano, Erin McGowan. Erin, introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Erin, as Matthew just said. Um, if you guys have listened to any of the Bad Batch stuff, you know me. I am, as referenced before, Paul was confused. I'm a clone freak. I'm obsessed with them. They were a big part of my childhood growing up and a big part of my, apparently, sexuality. So... <laughs> Just a warning to everyone. I consider them the dad batch because they are all DILFs. Fair. Fair enough. Uh, Paul, give your introduction. Yeah, I was just trying to picture where in the series there were like a bunch of clone butts, but, you know. (laughs) No, you have to look for it. Yeah, yeah. It obviously (laughs) didn't leave as much of an impression on me. Um, I will throw out, as far as them being DILFs or whatever, they're also like 10. But that's just. You know what? <laughs> so was Aaron, so it's okay. I was seven at the time. <laughs> no, no, fair, fair, fair. I mean, you know, they have adult cognition and all that. Uh, I'm Paul Hoppy, aka Zen Madman, and uh, yeah, I ju- I'm just here to cause trouble. There we go. There we go. Lots of trouble shall be caused. Well, let's just kind of get into it. Um, Paul, everyone's been listening to me and Aaron talk for the last eight weeks about, uh, or no, six, a whole long time. Yeah, a bunch about- of weeks. The Bad Batch. What did you think of season two overall? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed season two overall a lot. I liked kind of the overall theme of, you know, they were sort of trying to find their place in the galaxy after season one was basically just immediately reacting to what was going on. This season was, you know, it felt like they were choosing their own direction a little bit more as opposed to being as reactive for most of the time. Yeah. Um, I had a very opposite experience to kind of Mandalorian where with Bad Batch season two overall, I really liked it. The end or last couple episodes, not quite so much. Whereas Mandalorian, Uh uh, I didn't enjoy the season as a whole as much, but I actually enjoyed the ending. So... (laughs) Right. So they kind of play and I will just say now we're going to vo- we might talk about general themes from Mando because I think it's interesting since these two shows were coming out at the same time we will not sp- spoil any spoiler things about Mando season three uh, until the Patreon section at the end at which point we will be talking about uh, we'll be giving all of our impressions on that so for patrons you can stick around and hear that uh, but just know because even though Paul's talking about Mandalorian we if you haven't caught up with that yet that's fine uh, we're, we won't be spoiling anything. We'll be talking about some of the general stuff about it, but no big spoilers. So, Aaron, what about you? What was kind of your overall feeling on the season? I really enjoyed it. I liked, as Paul kind of said, having more autonomy, seeing what they actually wanted to do and how that looked for them, you know? Because the start of the yeah. season, they were like, didn't really know what to do. They were kind of rocking with Sid, but not really rocking with Sid. Kind of ready to find something else that's like more meaningful. And then, you know, Echo finds his calling, goes off with Rex. They have that whole emotional reaction, you know, Tech and Omega work through it together, which is really beautiful because in hindsight, it feels like Tech was preparing her for his death, which is really hurtful to me. But, Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) yeah. And then we had some fun episodes. Uh, Loved what we got with Crosshair. Like, Mm -hmm. the development is just chef's kiss, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought this season especially, we really got some great character development. We got Crosshair. Um, Tech, I thought, had some wonderful character development. Uh, I think we all have some thoughts about where his character arc ended. Uh, the whole going over a cliff thing. Uh, I guess metaphorically and literally. But um, Fee, I thought, was a really interesting character who got... Uh, did she get introduced this season? or No, she'd been introduced last season, I think. No. but. Uh, no, she was introduced this season. I thought she had an interesting character arc, um, Echo. And, you know, I, I just really appreciated. And, and here's maybe uh, there's going to be kind of a bouncing around, but we'll go through different themes and stuff. I'll start here. We, we all have feeling. You know what? Actually, let me back up a second because uh, I'm going to talk about the different characters. But I, I feel like it's kind of hard to say let's talk about tech without talking about his death because I feel like we all have feelings about that. So let's just get started. Um Paul, how did you feel about Tech's death? I didn't like it. Uh, Not in that, like, emotionally rending, like, Boromir at the end of, like, Fellowship of the Ring. Spoilers for uh, that 20-year-old movie. But, like, you know... (laughs) 70-year-old, 80-year-old story. (laughs) Yes. Uh, You know, sometimes someone, like, dies a hero's death and it feels like it's just, like, 
it's a natural byproduct of the story. Uh, it, actually, the example I happened to pick, it feels like they like really milked it, you know. But like, yeah, here it felt like the like leading up to tech, you know, it, it just it it was one of those things that to me just feels very predictable. As soon as Fee's yeah. saying goodbye to him, I'm like, oh, there he goes. You know, <laughs> like it, it just it, it felt like the writing was on the wall. And then they, it really felt that whole thing with the tram just felt like super contrived. And then I felt like they really dragged it out. And it's like overall, I really enjoyed the sound and the music in the series. But there whenever like a story is doing something that I find irritating I like the music gets on my nerves a lot of the time. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? Because it's like it feels to me like they're like feel this, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. yeah. No, go ahead. You you're not gonna. You feel like you're not having the emotional reaction it wants you to have, and so all the other things that are trying to get you to have that emotional reaction, you're just gonna react even even more negatively. To. It, exactly, exactly. And then when you top it off with like, is he dead though? Like he's in Star Wars and he fell. Like, the history of characters falling from high places in Star Wars and then showing up again later is, like, you know, like most of them, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somehow, Tech returned. Like, so... so that, that He wasn't even cut in half before he started falling. Right, he didn't even get bisected, you know? <laughs> He's fine. Like, and, uh, you know, on the one hand, you can kind of, like, Kino Loy him a bit where you're just like, yeah, yeah, I, I have this headcanon about whatever happened. But, like... Also, it's like, I feel like the story is probably going to bring him back at some point. He's probably going to end up in that, you know, Nazi doctor's, like, clone lab somewhere, you know? Although it's like, maybe it'll be an undead version of tech, which, like, I'm, I'm definitely not here for. <laughs> not that they have undead yeah. per se in Star Wars so much, but, you know, some, some like, weird... Frankenstein, I, like, I don't know. You know, I just, like, I, I didn't enjoy that as it was happening. I saw it coming ahead of time, and then, like, um, it just, I'm like, is is that actually going to be the end end? I, I did think that the reaction to it between, like, Omega and Hunter, like, that all kind of worked for me, and I really enjoyed Hunter being like, do you want to go live on wherever that place was, Pop. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And as opposed to being like, we're going to do this. And then like, she does, you know, having, having her have agency in that decision, which like, I think kids should have input into like where a family lives, you know, like I, I which I think often doesn't happen. It doesn't mean necessarily they get the final choice, but it's like, yeah, I, I think she gets to say things about it and then, you know, they make a decision and then obviously the story doesn't let them do that, but you know, maybe that's season five, who knows? Yeah, I think I'm very much where you are. I, I don't mind character death. There's something that we talked about a little bit, and Paul, you know, you, you and I have gone back and forth on that. Like, as a general rule, I don't mind if if an important character dies sometimes in a story. I don't like when it's telegraphed so heavily, and I like because if you told me at the beginning of this last episode someone's going to die, I would have said, well, it's probably tech mm. because like I I just hate the trope of if you give someone an arc and you give someone who all of a sudden is going to be really sad if they're going to die, guess what? They're going to die. Right. Um. On top of the fact of, I think I and a lot of neurodivergent folk had come to really identify with tech. Um. And the whole, like, no, he gets to not just be the butt of the joke, but, yeah, he gets to, like, the episode where he and Omega, like, sort of had a falling mm -hmm. out because he just, because he's neurodivergent and he couldn't understand where she was coming from. And then the others had to kind of smack him upside the head a bit and he listened and he was able to both be like, I want to connect with you more, but also please understand this is where I was coming from. And she had to listen to him and said, like, that was so great. And watching him and Fee, like Fee be like the most patient love interest that we've ever seen, who most people don't deserve that much, but like, you know, keep bonking him upside the head till they started to get it. And then, I don't know, to have him just die. And then, and then also agree with you to then, I hate fake death. I am, I think it cheapens death. I think it means that I don't, because I, I want to be emotionally affected when a character dies. I, I enjoy that feeling, as horrible as that is. Because <laughs> I, I, 
S- side comment, but if you follow Star Wars TikTok and Star Wars Twitter, uh, written in the Star Wars was one of my favorite. Danielle out there is one of the best at this, but there's so many of us. And it's like every tweet is like, hey, do you ever think about the fact that the pain this character went through, when you look at it in terms of the pain that this character went through, it actually means that both of them had even more pain? Isn't that terrible? Don't you feel bad now? And we all love that content because we're all masochists in the Star Wars fandom, I guess. I don't know. Um, but like, I... I don't mind when a character dies, but to have it be so telegraphed that it's them and then also to not show us the body because, yeah, because like they could bring him back. It could be a Winter Soldier thing. It it looked a hell of a lot like one, certainly. It could be like, I hope they don't do this, but they could could literally just give us Echo all over again. Mm. You're talking about there's never been really undead, but there's certainly been like Frankenstein, like plugged into the machine. Um, Yeah. So to me, it was one of the few sour notes, but it was a very sour note. I would I guess, say. I, I just yes. want to amend my. No, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh. Amend. Yeah, I just want to amend my statement about undead. I mean, Kenobi is literally a ghost in. You know, yeah, I almost. mean, so the, obviously there is undead, but it's not, you know, a, a huge right. thing most it's of the time. It's not reanimation. We, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had zombie Geonosians at one point, but that's. Yeah, and there. I think something with the night witches? The night. The, Night Sisters? Yep. Oh, yeah, we had to, zombies. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we've had zombies. Yeah, yeah. zombies. So, you know, it's... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so kind of my thoughts on text death, because originally I was like, no, fake. <clears throat> I don't accept <clears throat> this. And I just, like, didn't love it, but, like, Matthew and I talked about it on the episode about the finale. And we are just kind of talking through how, like, if it is a fake death, how much that just cheapens everything that's happened. And then Star Wars Celebration happened, and they announced um, season three is the final season of The Bad Batch. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that that gives enough time to even, like, have an arc like that. Because we have Omega and possibly Crosshair to, like, tie up those arcs. Well, actually, definitely Crosshair, because they're in the same place now. Yeah. So Uh I think I've come around to the conclusion that I... One, I wouldn't really want them to bring him back just because I went through so much pain. How dare you? I'm going to hurt you. Um, And just two, because like, I mean, what I said before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's legit. That's legit. Yeah, I wouldn't expect a huge arc or anything. I could see him being like in the same place as Omega and Crosshair. Um, I, mm-hmm. I did think overall it was an interesting choice that, like, it felt to me like, okay, the penultimate episode of the season is just going to be them going and getting the information about where Crosshair is. And then the last episode is going to be them going to get Crosshair, right? Like, right. clearly, that's, like, the plan. And then at the end of the first episode, it's like, oh, that that feels like that's not what's going to happen. <laughs> and and then to like not even go to that place at all, you know, to have that just mm-hmm. totally fail. Um, I think on its own was an interesting choice. And if it hadn't been, you know, right. Surrounded by this whole, I'm going to say melodramatic, uh, you know, orchestrated mm-hmm. death scene, basically. Yeah. Um, sometimes I just like, if there's going to be like a character death, like maybe they just get shot. You know, maybe they just get crushed by a bunch of payroll. Like, maybe they die freezing to death off screen. You know, like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just just some examples for, you know, some some, where some writers could maybe get some (laughs) ideas from some other writers. Yeah, I remember I was reading something about, in some totally different show, but where a character did have something like that, where just, like, they got hit by one of the bullets as they were attacking. Right. And and one of the commentators said, like, this sucked, this character deserved a much better death. Right. And, like, no, not ev- like, that's not how combat works. Like, right, not right. everyone gets to be Boromir. Yeah. And sometimes you do just get shot, like, even if you're the hero in the hard situation. And, Yeah. Well, all right. Well, we got that. Uh, we'll probably refer back to that a lot. But we talked about Tex death. Now let's talk about Tex life. Uh, Paul, what do you think of Tex arc in this season? Yeah. So my introduction to Tex arc was really editing the podcast that Aaron did with Danielle, and I, I really enjoyed that and both of your perspectives on it. Um, and because I I like tried to watch all eight episodes first and then do that, but I didn't get it done in time, and I was just like. 
<laughs> All right, I'll just I'll just edit the episode. So I was like listening to that episode without having seen the source episode, which was a really yeah. interesting experience. So then when I got up to that point and watched it, I was watching it kind of through the lens of that, which um, which was really cool. And I, I did like that was kind of the maybe the turning point episode, right? But even like the pit racing episode and um, or whatever the kind of racing they were doing, I don't know. Um, oh yeah, the one where they go to help out Sid, um, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know, I don't and, remember what they called it. Yeah, I don't either. Like it wasn't pod racing, but it it felt a lot like pod racing. <laughs> yeah, but like I, I enjoyed kind of you know tech got to be a central character in that episode, right? And mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think him kind of explaining how he just doesn't necessarily experiencing. Th- experience things the same way that someone else might but that doesn't mean he's not experiencing them right it's like he doesn't feel echo's loss or respond to it the same way that another person might but that doesn't mean like he doesn't feel the loss it's just like you know i mean also yeah like as a soldier there's you you deal with that a lot and i mean the the bad batch managed to they kind of had their own group and it seems that they managed to all stay together the whole time and Mm -hmm. you know you could say got really lucky slash were really skilled but you know they certainly saw tons of their their identical to one another brothers you know die in in this war i mean tens of thousands hundreds of thousands however many right and so i would i would imagine that you know, that would have a large effect. I mean, personally, um, just having had a lot of people in my life die from a young age. Like, I think one of the reasons that, like, death on screen affects me a little differently is because I'm like, yeah, I I dealt with that, like, in reality when I was eight, you know? So, like, I'm not like, oh, yeah, I want to feel that. I'm like, no, I'm thanks, I'm good. Like, you know, but, like, um, but I, I do think, like, in in reality, like it, it feels different than, than it might, you know? And similarly, like for tech, it's like, um, you know, he just, he doesn't express things exactly the same way, you know, but like, that doesn't mean he's not feeling them or thinking about them. And, uh, I think giving him kind of the, the room to state that I, I think was really cool. Definitely. Well, especially cause like even putting aside any like neurodivergent stuff, and great, like he's not officially diagnosed as that in this universe. It's just that I think a lot of folks, myself included, who who have that, can look at him and be like, okay, this person feels like me. But also, just in my many years as a relationship counselor um, and, and marital counselor and the like, the number of times where the heart of a problem was like this thing happened, and the two people responded to it in different ways. Uh, well, no, I'm sorry. The two people expressed their their reaction to it in different mm. ways, mm-hmm. and so one or the other, like, made a judgment about or felt that like they weren't respo- they weren't feeling it the same. Like that there there was some element of like, I am going to judge your reaction through the lens of how I would react. Yeah. And I feel like that's exactly what that scene is all about, you know. And I I, I, I like when these shows are about you know lightsabers and spaceships and the force but also just about like normal human interactions that can happen yeah and let me then throw this question out to you because i remember thinking this when when echo went away i felt like you for a lot of season one i liked both tech and echo but they blended together to for me in such similar like they were different characters but they felt very similar i felt like you couldn't really it was essential to give tech that character growth for echo to not be there or maybe not essential, but it made it a lot easier. And on the flip side, I'm looking forward to maybe getting some more growth from echo without tech there. Did you all feel that at all? Did you, did you just kind of like feel annoyed that we lost echo for a part of the season? What was your thought? I wouldn't say I was annoyed in any way. Cause yeah, I agree. I love that. Like the character growth it gave tech and just like, even like record, like they all, changed and like had a different reaction um so i like to see that but personally like echo will always stand out to me just because of like how Mm -hmm. important 
clones were to me as a child. I would literally rewatch episodes and write down any clone name I overheard someone say. So every single clone that like screamed in the background and they had subtitles for his name, I would like write it down and I would just read that list because I'm literally crazy. Anyway, <laughs> but like Echo and Fives were like very dear to me. So mm-hmm. even though, you know, he's changed, things are a little different. And yeah, it's like he's a little more techy because he has the droid arm. He's still just like my commando king. Like, he will always <laughs> stand out to me, but I understand that that's not the same experience that everyone has. Yeah, that's fair. I would, I would kind of echo that um, and <laughs> say that uh, <laughs> it was the word that came to mind, not I on purpose. I wish the pure look of shame on your face as you said that could be captured for our podcast listeners. I, I don't know <laughs> if I'd call it shame, but yeah. Um, <laughs> it's... Uh, it, the two characters actually feel very different from one another to me, despite the fact that uh, they share three of the same letters in their names. But, like, they have similar functions in terms of some of the things they're doing on the team, right? Like, yeah. Echo has become more of a, a tech sort of person, right? I mean, because right. he has, it, you know, cybernetics, basically, right? Um but they they feel very different in terms of, I don't know, I, I feel like, in a way, Echo almost feels a bit to me kind of like the heart of the Bad Batch, even though he wasn't there in the beginning. And I think Wrecker seems that way in a lot of ways, right? Like he's a particular type of part of the heart or whatever. But like, right. I, Echo, it made sense that he wanted to go and do more, right? Like it, it also made a lot of sense that he wanted to go off with Rex and do more with Rex because like Rex brought him back with the Bad Batch, right? And then he was like, okay, now I'm going to go off with with the Bad Batch because I feel like one of them more than I feel like, you know, one of the regs at this point. But like, still, he feels like he wants to, he wants to do something. Like, I feel like he has more of a, like a drive and purpose, right? Whereas I feel like tech is... I mean, less overtly emotional, at least, right? And I, and so I don't feel like I get that from Echo. But I agree with what you're saying, Matthew, in terms of, not because of their similarity, but I just feel like you remove one character and it gives all the other characters more room, you know? Yeah. And so I, I do think when you took Echo out of the situation, not only did that give um, Tech and Omega something to react to and then talk to each other about, but it also just created more space. You know, the same way, if you think about before Echo uh, went off, they actually had an episode, I believe, without Hunter and without Echo, and it was Wrecker, Tech, and Omega going off with Sid. And they deliberately split the team up like that, so they give more space, right, for each character to kind of uh, do their thing more and and breathe, basically. And so I I think that worked that way. I think it functioned. Mm -hmm. If I can kind of go off of what you were saying about Echo kind of being the heart of the group, I feel like a big part of that could be because he was a reg, you know? Mm -hmm. And he was used to, like, this dutiful purpose of, like, helping people and, like, caring for so many people around him. Whereas the rest of the batch has always been like, this is our squad. We only really care about our squad. We honestly don't really like anyone else except for our squad. (laughs) And we do, like, high-intensity, like insertion like missions we're not like yeah in the streets working with citizens you know saving little girls things like that mm-hmm. right and i think that's also essential because and here's kind of one of the other point a larger point i was that i thought was interesting about the season is that it, in a way it felt like this season to me felt similar to season one of mandalorian and kind of season two of mandalorian at least towards the end in that a big thing of those early seasons of Mandalorian that I think season three is, isn't is doing as much, and people have mixed feelings about that. I'm a fan. Other people aren't. That's a whole other question. But in that first episode of season of Mandalorian, basically, like, Mando wasn't caught up in the galactic... Like, he didn't, you know, go back to rescue Grogu because he won't, like, you know, screw the Empire. Yeah. He wasn't like, yay, the New Republic. We, the audience, got to learn about the world happening around him because he kept dropping in on things. But he was like, I- I- I'm just trying to survive. I'm just, you know, making my way in the universe, to quote Boba. Like, and I kind of feel like that's where the bat- that, that, that to me felt like a really important part of this season is that the Bad Batch were 
they're leaning towards like, well, maybe we really don't like this empire, but like they're not going to get Crosshair because they think Crosshair is a vital, you know, uh, element of the empire and they need to take that away or they need to help the struggle. They just want to get their buddy. You know, they, yeah. they want to just happily hide out. Um, and, and I kind of, the reason I wanted to bring up this topic is because I, I feel, I don't think I thought of it before. I don't think they could get there without Echo. And I think with Echo back now, there is going to be more of that tension because I think Echo probably is the one who's the most like, no, there's bad stuff happening out there. The war isn't over. We need to keep doing this. Yeah. If I can just correct myself from before, I panicked and I said that Echo was a commando king. He's an arc trooper. He, w- he was oh, God, king. how could you how could both I, I, I just know there's someone listening to this podcast that heard that and was like she's an idiot what a fake fan because I used to like no offense but like listen to earlier episodes of this podcast and I'd be like no I know what they're talking about neither of them can think of it but like I know it and I'd like say it to my radio <laughs> story anyway, checks out so uh, h- hold on one second um does an arc ARC isn't the C an arc commando you know what I don't want to talk about it <laughs> Hold on. I need to now look this up because I'm not positive. I mean, a fish, it might stand for that, but officially the commandos are different because they have different armor. Okay. So, like, yeah, in the Star Arc, Wars universe. Arc is advanced recon commando. Yeah. But the Arc troopers have double pauldrons and they have their comma, their little, like, belt skirt. And then commandos don't have any of that, but they have, like, short, fatter okay. guns, and they have the blue, like, visors that glow. So, we d- I have talked before about how I'm kind of proud of the fact that we got a one-star review that was all about how we didn't know the exact name of something that you only knew if you'd read... S- was that from you? No! <laughs> 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 no, I think it's awesome that you're hearing That's that. So uh, it, it is great, and yes, he's he's the arc command. He is the arc. We'll, we'll, we'll call him the arc commander. Uh, uh, what was it? Was it daddy? Was that the end word? Dilf. Uh, I said king I think, commander. Oh. It can be daddy. I'm okay with that. Aaron, you too. Went muted on us, or do I just stop being able to hear you both? Oh, My that's you. Pulled out at the worst possible time. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm leaving all of us in, folks, because this is probably comedy gold. <laughs> okay, now I can hear you both. Welcome back. Anyway, back to our regularly scheduled program already in progress. Um, uh, connections with Mandalorian, them not wanting to be heroes yet, Echo's place and all that. What do you got to say for ourselves? So, like, I think Echo's kind of, like, walked both worlds to, you mm-hmm. know, reference something else that we're not talking about yet. But, like, you know, he, he was very much in the war and with, you know, the regs. And then now... He's in the Bad Batch and he's like not a reg, but he he's kind of got one foot in each and he kind of, you know, he went back and then he went back back. Right. And like, I think he is the one that's going to kind of bring them around to yeah. not necessarily just the idea like there's stuff going on and we need to do something about it because it's important that we do something about it. And that might be the direction they go, but I think it could be just as easily. It could be more of sort of an Andor situation of, no, we want to try and get away with it, away from it. And then realizing there is no away from it. You know, like the empire is expanding. They're increasing their control over more and more places. And, there's, there's just not going to be anywhere to go, right? Like, I thought it was really nice that... Is it Palu? No. It's... Pabu. 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 I had three letters, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's nice that on Pabu, like... You know, I that episode where they first showed up there and it's like they're basically fighting a tsunami, right? Like, mm-hmm. it, it felt a little kind of like, okay, I guess we're doing this now. But at the same time, it was like... It was nice that they weren't fighting the Empire, you know, I liked yeah. that there were a couple episodes where it was basically just them against nature trying to survive, right? And just not always having, like, a human or, or you know, alien humanoid um, or just, like, a big giant animal to fight. It's like, no, there's, like, right. circumstance. They're trying not to fall off a cliff when they're in one of those big treasure bins, right, with um, the Dooku treasure. Yeah. Like, like there was a fair amount of that, which I, which I enjoy, you know? It's like you don't always need to be shooting at someone to have some sort of physical struggle. And yeah. I, I think... Um, but it's like I could see... The Empire eventually invading Pabu as soon as I learn how to say it right. That's probably when it's doomed, you know? So. <laughs> <laughs> you have till next season. We have to get right by then. Yeah. 
Oh, that was that was like the whole thought. <laughs> <laughs> But the point is, like, maybe there's nowhere to go, you know? And yeah. it's like, it could be more of a choice, like, okay, we want to try and go do something because it's important to do something like that. Or it could be like, yeah, all right, they've left us no choice. You know, we're, we're in another war whether we want to be or we don't. For me, I think it really came to light when... Because, you know, it's funny, it, you don't often think about what's not happening. And so I hadn't really been thinking as much about the fact that, like, because they're fighting the Empire almost every episode. Mm-hmm. So you don't think about the fact that they're kind of not, like, they're fighting the Empire only out of necessity. They're not being rebels yet, by any means. Right. And I don't think I really thought of that until they had that ep- that final episode, or second final episode, where they run into Saw Gerrera. Right. And to me, I thought what I love so much about that episode, I'm curious what you all thought of that and, and about Saw in general, is that, like, people act as though – there's been a lot of discourse about it online, which I don't want to get into, but, like, a lot of the stuff I saw was, like, oh, you know, they were doing better, like, Saw should have stopped for them or whatever, and – to me, what the point of that scene, one of them, is that there, there's two fundamentally different things happening. Saw is there to fight the Empire. He's there to fight injustice. They're just trying to rescue their friend. Yeah. And I don't think there's anything bad about that goal or that, like, you know, hierarchies of nobility or anything like that. But I do think it's pretty clear that, like, one of these groups are rebels and the other are just... The phrase out for themselves has a very pejorative connotation, and I don't mean it that way. But that that's what they are, as opposed to you know, I mean, they're out they're, for their friend as well. Yeah. But but it, 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 they have a personal goal, where Saw has a much more like broad galactic goal. Yeah. Although I mean, you know, you could say like his broad galactic goal is motivated by vengeance as much as anything, and is you know formed from his own sure. personal experience. But like, uh, which isn't to say it's bad. You know, just that there's right. you know everybody's kind of got their own reasons for the things that they choose right. to do. Uh, yeah, I would say. Uh, Not as much, like, uh, to basically take uh, out for themselves and kind of reshape it a little bit. I I would say they are, um, you know, motivated by survival and, like, looking out for their own, kind of. Right. You know, like, they're they're willing to stick their necks out to try and rescue and, and help kind of a... A subset of people, you know, they're they're not trying to make huge change. They're basically trying to. They're they're like a surgical strike team, right? Like they've yeah. they've always been doing like missions that are very specific. They're not fighting the massive battles most of the time, and um, and I think that that kind of that's how they see things, right? They see things right. about the mission, not about like the quest. Yeah, all right, maybe that made sense. I don't know. Just saying, yeah, as in, I I agree. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) You both thought I had more to say, and I don't. (laughs) That's fair. That's fair. No, yeah, I I think it's a good way to put it again. Like, like, it's, again, it's what I'm enjoying about the show, and I think it's... Andor, I think, clearly kind of set a very high bar in terms of, like, let's go for moral grayness. Let's go for, like, moving as far away from we can from the, like, good guy's good, bad guy's bad. And I feel like this show kind of followed in those footsteps in a lot of ways, you know, and that, and I think there's a lot of, there's still for a lot of folks, the opinion of like, oh, well, it's animated, so it's the more kid show, etc. This, this felt to me like it was, I hate most of those ideas in general, but like this felt like it was, it, the topics weren't simplistic in the way I think people often associate with a kid's show, you know, and I think mm-hmm. like all the stuff we got about Crosshair and some of the others, I was really impressed with that level of storytelling. Yeah, and I mean, that's what's so good, in my opinion, about Dave Filoni. That's what he's always been good at, if you exclude the first two and a half seasons of The Clone Wars. It's always been like, like, The Clone Wars is a heavy show. I've been watching it through with my brother, and he's like Mm -hmm. 26. And he's like, damn, this is like dark. Oh, excuse me. I mean, and even... even in isn't it in season one of Clone Wars where we get the episode with the the th- theoretical deserter, the the cut who has kind of like gone off and had his own life, and Rex is like you're supposed to be a fighter, and he's like, no, I'm not, and they like they talk about the nature of like our clones, do they have independence and stuff? Like I agree with you. Season first two and a half seasons are pretty weak, but even they have some 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 episodes that go real dark, and real real deep. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think just also just the animation, like in the beginning, is really rough. Like it, it yeah. gets yeah. better <laughs> over time, you know. And yeah. Um, but yeah, I was Lee was watching it for the first time, and she was like, she was like, this is depressing. You know, and then Rebels is like also depressing, but a little more hopeful. You know, like the Clone Wars is basically the period of time that leads up to the fall of the Republic and the rise of the Empire. And like, it's this big war that's just incredibly stupid because it's one yeah. side against itself, basically. It's all just a setup and just tons of people dying and suffering for just absolutely no good reasons. You know, and you can say that like, whether or not there should be a republic and whether its systems should be independent and whatever it's like sure there's there's a whole lot to say about that but like the way the whole thing actually went is like ridiculous you know and right. uh but the show i think is is very good at showing a number of different perspectives and experiences throughout that that whole war and then um you know, I think I think Rebels on average is generally like a little better, right? Like mm. things are learned, right? Like you start a series yeah. somewhere and then uh, also maybe like there was an idea that like, you know, the beginning of the Clone Wars was aimed at a certain age group. And then usually as a series like that progresses, you know, say someone's seven when they watch season one. Well, they're going to be eight when they watch season two and they're going to be, you know, right. Mm -hmm. older than that i don't know math um like as as the series goes on right and so generally right. series often tend to like quote unquote kids series tend to have a bit of a trajectory where they get it's not necessarily darker but sometimes heavier and sometimes a little a little you know deeper and so or they try to go deeper mm -hmm. in certain subjects you know yeah um and and yeah, I think I think Filoni's stuff does a, a really good job of that. And then every now and then has a scene like this thing with tech, which there was a scene like that in Rebels that <laughs> not everybody felt yeah. the same way. But like, I was just like, oh, man. Uh, but yep. no spoilers for that, because you still haven't covered that part of Rebels yet, right? No, we haven't. And the, the Hayashis who had been with it, um, I need to because now we have this down period. I think we're gonna, here's my thought. We're way off topic here, but I'll give this thought quickly. My thought is that we're going to spend a lot of the time between now and the Ahsoka show, which is coming in only a couple of months, doing kind of like some Ahsoka, you know, primer stuff, some other things like that. And then after Ahsoka, we should have a good long time at that point, hopefully with the Hayashis, if not with some other folks, maybe yourselves included, we will hit the last episodes of uh, Rebels. Cool. We have the last like season and a half. I will also say uh, somehow our episode coverage of the last episode of the Clone Wars I can't find and has gotten deleted from online so I might just have us re-record on that and I might finally be willing to talk about Solo on air oh wow um, interesting because as I've said as long as I just pretend it doesn't have the word Star Wars attached to it I think it's a really fun movie yeah um, Solo it's just about a guy on his own Solo that's, yeah, that's the only thing exactly. that that means I will um, say, Matthew, I noticed that the last episode of Clone Wars is gone, and it drove me crazy. Like, I was so <laughs> excited to hear everyone's thoughts, and it's like, the last episode was missing, and then you did, like, a wrap-up episode, and yeah. I was listening to the wrap-up episode, I was like, this doesn't make sense. They're referencing <laughs> an episode that doesn't exist. And then I totally forgot about it until you brought it up now, and I'm like, oh my god, that's I'm right. So sorry. <laughs> well, Well, instead of listening to it, you'll probably get to be a part of yeah. it, so... Woo. I mean, and, I mean oh what no. we're, we we want to do Ahsoka primer and like that's some major Ahsoka content. So anyway, that, that was one of the best back. episodes in any Star Wars ever. Also, by the way, yes, and I, I think we covered it well. Like I really enjoyed covering that. I remember where I was standing and like what the weather was <laughs> like. Like. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I I'm gonna keep digging through my hard disks. I just don't think I have it. Um. Anyway, though, back to this, because uh, I don't want to make this episode go too long. Those were some of the major points I wanted to cover. Um, well, first of all, do either of you have any other thoughts about Saw Gerrera and his showing up, uh, or if not, other things you wanted to, to mention about this season? I always like to see Saw, because I think his, like, quote, quote, extremist views and, like, actions always challenge our main characters. Like, he's never been the main character. He's just there to, like, make other people think harder. And I kind of like seeing how different people react to that. Because, you know, like, 
and the Republic, they were like kind of all there for that. They were like, yes, we're going to teach you how to be a terrorist. Let's go. (laughs) And then he just kept doing that. And then eventually people were like, hey, stop that. And then, you know, we see him in Rogue One and... He's, like, at this downfall, and I just loved... I always love seeing Sagarera. I love having so much growth as far as, like, in age range. I love seeing that much growth from a character who's not, like, a focus character. Like, it's just, like, checking in. Like, what's been happening with Saw? And then it gives mm-hmm. a lot of room for, like, imagination. Yeah. Yeah, I like... Um Seeing him show up, seeing him show up there seemed a little odd, and I felt like they probably could have worked through their conflict uh, in that situation. Mm-hmm. Like, can you just blow it up after we get on the ship? Like, can, can we just, you know, like yeah. Yeah. maybe we could talk this out with like two or three sentences? But um, it, I, I, it felt a bit contrived. I'll fully agree. With right, that. and and like I a f- lot of things around text def. Yeah, and and I feel like a lot of times saw is used in that kind of like. Like, he's probably right, right? Like, most of the time. But the, I feel like they kind of don't want him to be right. But it's like they... Yeah. It's 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 that sort of, like, when you have a villain who's who's got a really good point, but then they go too far. And I feel like with Saw, it's like, I don't, I don't know if he's actually going too far. Like, maybe most of the other people aren't going far enough in a lot of things. And, um... You know, maybe maybe that at the end of it kind of is... Maybe he doesn't have a long game as much, but, like, they're kind of thinking about the long game so much that they just have no short game. Like, and that they're, yeah. like, you know, just kind of kicking the ball down the road. And it's like, it, you know, the, the Empire's only going to get stronger. So, like, you, you have to do something. I mean, I think Saw is one of the few people who was like, no, the, this fight never ended. Right. Like, he never, you know, he recognized that the this new Empire thing was just as bad, if not worse. Yeah. And I kind of think, there's a weird connection, but Saw feels a lot, the way that we think about Saw feels a lot like the way we think about Magneto. And, and mm. what I mean by that is, yeah. especially that I think Saw is a wonderful illustration of what I think has been since the very beginning, the first movies way way back in the 70s and 80s, you know, one of the core ideas is that if you are driven to, to, to fight something, even if it's like something bad, but you're driven by anger or vengeance or, you know, uh, revenge or those kind of things that you're, you know, that if it's the force, at least that that's what takes you to the dark side, you know, and that's the, the emperor wants them to lash out in their hate and things like that. And that represents an idea of like, yeah, like no matter how unjust, how much you're fighting injustice, you have to still, you know, love the enemy and like, you know, see the humanity in them and that kind of thing. And I think Saw is a living embodiment of what they're talking about of he mm. is, as you said, Paul, driven primarily by vengeance and what happened to his sister and what happened to his planet and a lot of these things. And that sometimes he doesn't see the full picture because of that. But I also think that they've told his story in a way that's, that's because like in the same way that like Magneto is presented as kind of a pure villain back at the time Star Wars was originally being made. And today, most of the time it's like, no, he's really got a point. We, the writers just have to make him so extreme that you stop liking him again. Which it seems is happening with Saw as well. Um, like it just feels a very similar thing of like people are really starting to understand. Like maybe some of the darks, maybe some of the idea of acting out of anger, acting out of vengeance, acting out of fury for justice is not always bad. It's just that it's a lot harder to control. And and so I see a lot of that in Saw. And I mm-hmm. I think it's very easy to write off Saw as like Saw bad, our heroes good. Which yeah. if you like Luthen and Andor congrats, you're a hypocrite. Like, it's the same <laughs> kind of idea. And not exactly the same, but but similar. But, like, yeah, I, ju- I just think it's a really interesting thing. Like, I'll, and I, I, there's no, I would just sum up and repeat myself. So, yeah, the, the, <laughs> Saw is the kind of idea of turning to the dark side, but also maybe it's not quite so bad as we thought it was when the movie started. Yeah, and I sometimes... That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, sometimes you need a sharp sword or something, kind of, is the, yeah. you know. And, I mean, the, the Jedi carry, they carry lightsabers, right? <laughs> like, the, those aren't, like, stun guns, you know? Like, yep. in, like, 
the Jedi could really fight a lot more peacefully if they really wanted to, you know, but it's like, you know, sometimes, yeah. sometimes, sometimes you need to blow stuff up. <laughs> yeah. Always for defense, never for attack, but sometimes the best defense is a good offense. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any last things uh, any of you all wanted to bring up? Um, a few favorites from the season. Uh, Commander Mayday stole my heart and then broke it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really great episode. Um, really hurtful also seeing Crosshair just like oh, broken yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. um, seeing Hauser again. <gasps> oh, my God. I was so happy. Hauser. Okay. I know I always say the Bad Batch are dilfs. Yes. Hauser's a dilf, though. Like, with those <laughs> grays he's got coming in and that scar. Oh, I was so look. happy to see him again. I want him back. I want him back in season three, but I want him to be a bigger part of it just because I like mm -hmm. his face. Even though it's the same yeah. face as everyone else. You get it. <laughs> I, I did like that they brought back some of those folks, that it wasn't just like, hey, it's all done. But then, yeah, like... The fact that you could introduce Mayday, give him just a small part helping Crosshair, and then his death feels – and I think the fact that his death felt so significant to us meant that his death being the thing that really affects Crosshair so much made total sense. Like that mm – -hmm. to me, is just brilliant writing. Yeah, that was one of my favorite episodes of the season. And like, you know, that – to me, that's like – that's how you do a character death, you know? Yeah. It's like – and that was stupid. Like that's a stupid death. Like, there's no reason for him to die. But the point is, he died because of that lieutenant, right? Yep. Who was incompetent and malevolent. And then yeah. I was just like, I was like, just just shoot him, Crosshair. Just shoot. He shot him. Yes, <laughs> I was so happy. I was like, yes. <laughs> I, I should actually, that should have been one more topic before Aaron and one here was else on your list, though. What did you think, uh, and Paul threw it to you since we've talked about it a good deal. What do you think of Crosshair's arc this season? Yeah, I thought it was great. It, it's it's a great example of how you can do a really strong character arc and show a lot of what someone's going through without having them say a word about how they feel. You know, mm -hmm. you can have arcs where somebody's expressing their emotions, but here I feel it watching it. You know, I I feel how he's feeling in the episodes. I mean, he got a couple of episodes that were basically his episodes, right? And then he also was woven through some other episodes here and there. And just the fact that he was so, like, good soldiers follow orders, you know? And, like, this is my purpose. This is what I'm here for. And, you know, when when he shot that, uh, the, the governor of that, you know, former separatist place that now is, is part of the Empire, um, and now she's the former governor... But like that, that felt like that's like how devoted he was to not to the cause in terms of like, like he doesn't believe in it. Right. He doesn't necessarily care about it, but he's like, this is just who I am. What this is what I do. You know, it's what I've always done. It's what I was born for. It's what I'm good at. And then to see him face like just the extent to which. The Empire just doesn't care that he's given everything. You know, it, it reminded me of the, the Clive Owen line in the Born Identity. You know, look at what they make you give. And, you know, like they basically they ask everything from you and they just give you nothing in return. They don't care about you. They don't care about what you've done, except whether it, you know, checks their boxes and accomplishes their goals. And the fact that, you know, for, for him to see just how disposable all of them were doing things that were so dumb, like they were guarding uniforms or something, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, they're on this, like, frozen planet, and then it just it just felt right to me, you know? And it, it felt yeah. simple. It felt like a simple arc. It's not, a, it's not an arc. It's not an arc. It's a, it's a right angle, you know? <laughs> like, it's not a 180, because he's not all of a sudden like, I'm going to fight the Empire, but it's just like he's going in one direction... And then he just hangs a hard right turn. And yeah. and it's like, it's sudden, but it just feels right. And it feels like maybe there was some doubt all along, but he was like, but no, this is what I do. This is who I am. 
And then he gets to this point, and it's just the breaking point, and it's like, forget it. This is ridiculous. What am I doing? And I think, I, I never really put this together until I was listening to you speak, but I think it's really important that his break has nothing to do with the rest of the Bad Batch. Mm-hmm. Like, in, I think you would have expected it to be something like where he saw, like, one of his former brothers was about to get killed. And, and right. that story can work, but that's so trope. And, and I think for him, but also he... Because in his mind, they all betrayed him. And he has right. such so many of these complicated feelings. So, yeah, for it, for it to be someone like Mayday instead, I don't know. I, just think, I, I think it makes the story even stronger, that it's not about them. Yeah. Yeah, and in season two, like, they kind of, I mean, season one, the end of season one, they basically did that, where the Bad Batch comes back, and then he turns against the Empire just to save them, basically, mm-hmm. right? But then he's like, no, I'm still with the Empire. I just, you know, was yeah. going to save your butts. Because some people like to look at them. So, you know, we'll. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he appreciates it. <laughs> hey, just for I'm appreciating story- your appreciation. I didn't, I didn't mean that to sound like, like uh, no, snide or anything. No, it's so funny. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Uh, Aaron, what else is on your list? Um, I mean,. Nothing crazy. The Indiana Jones episode was pretty fun, you know? I -hmm. liked having, like, the fee-centric episodes and stuff where she just wouldn't be around for a few episodes, and then she'd just hop in and be, like, a role model for Omega, or be, like, the fun person, or, you know, a love interest. So, Mm -hmm. I liked Fee in general, and seeing her, Wanda Sykes is always great. So, there was no going wrong there. Yeah. She's like the fun aunt, kind of, it feels like. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And I thought, well, actually, I'll be curious, Paul, this is another good one to throw at you. I know you often don't like romance plots because they feel contrived or put on. I felt like the flirtation with her and Tech, A, it was just done in a very charming way, but also it was done in a way that really kind of highlighted who he was and his growth. Um, other than the, oh, by the way, now that you're about to get a kiss, that means you have to die. Um, what did you kind of think of, of, of the, the fee and tech of it all? Yeah. I mean, I would, I would describe it more as her flirting at him. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. and it, it felt, I liked it, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, I mean, it didn't really go beyond that, like until the very end. And then it's like, oh, now he has to die or fall yeah. to a <laughs> inconclusive end. Now he has to Bucky Barnes. Let's just call that. Now he has to Sherlock. I mean, you know, if we're going to go back a hundred some odd years. Oh, boy. That too. (laughs) All right. Tropes have been tropes a long time. (laughs) That's why they're tropes. It's a specific falling from a tram train. Oh, sure. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. It is extra Bucky. You're right. You're right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Paul, do you have any other last things you want to bring up? Yeah, really just short notes. Like, I do really enjoy kind of the, the pre-Bellion, you know, um, with mm-hmm. the, the clones uh, starting their their thing. And um, I enjoyed that Cody, like, left after after Crosshair yeah. shot that governor, you know. Um, especially because, I mean, he was quite murderous towards Jedi right away um, in, yeah. in live action, right? Um and yeah so i I enjoy that direction it feels like it shares some dna with andor in a way in that way you know um and then uh, the animation just uh you know the the face is still and like the hair i think still leaves something to be desired compared to like you know some of the best animation out there but um the landscapes and just the variety of landscapes and often sometimes like the sound design around like where they are uh there's just so many different environments and i think that's one thing that uh and animation sometimes can capture better than live action and i I feel like um that was really beautiful and i really enjoyed just how many different places they were and how they all felt really different yeah Yeah. there was the whole wookie jedi thing too right like yep gunji yeah that was Mm -hmm. fun were you gonna say something else Oh, Eric. yeah, I was just going to say there's just a lot of really beautiful, like, landscape shots or, like, horizon mm-hmm. shots of, like you were saying, a bunch of different types of planets. Yeah, definitely. 
All right. Well, thank you both. There is so much more we could say about the show. I'm sure it is one we'll keep coming back to because it's setting the stage, obviously, for a lot of other great stuff to come. Uh, and we will talk a little bit more about Mandalorian in a patron section. Uh, but before then, for folks who don't know where to find you, uh, where is Zen Madman creating content these days? Yeah, uh, Zen Madman's tweeting and whatnot, but also creating low content poker and chess books for people who are into that kind of stuff and uh, writing some stories. And uh, I guess I have a website, zenmadman.com, that will, there'll, there'll be some blanks and stuff there sooner or later. It'll, it'll be a little more, more user friendly, but uh, yeah. And then maybe Twitch soon, but not yet. And YouTube. Cool. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm doing too many things. <laughs> too many things. Love it. <laughs> what else is new? Aaron, yeah. what about yourself? Yeah, um, you can find me at Lady Tano Creates. That's T A N O for Tano, as in Ahsoka. I cosplay her, so that's what most of my account is about. I have an Instagram and a TikTok. I also have Facebook. Um, that's just under my name, Aaron McGowan. Um, But it's not the one where I have brown hair and it's long because that was my high school Facebook and I got locked out of it. And no matter how many times I report it, they won't take it down. (laughs) Anyways, if you want to see like events I'm doing in the Twin Cities, I guess I do put stuff like that on Facebook. But mostly on TikTok and stuff, I do tutorials or not tutorials, but like a come along with me as I stumble my way through crafting cosplay things and then on instagram is mostly like updates on big things and then photos from cons and things like that so if you're interested in learning more about cosplay as i also learn more about cosplay drop a follow if not just glad you listened you know He's definitely checking out. I, I will confess that in the last video, you were doing a whole bunch of stuff with glue in what looked like a closed garage. Uh, and so part of me both wanted to be like, please open a window. But also this could be entertaining if she doesn't open a window. Uh, but none of that happened. So it seemed like you were totally fine. No, because um, I literally told someone recently, I love Flex Bond because it smells so good. <laughs> and that's the glue I was using. And they were like, Aaron, glue. you can't say that. And I was like, oh, you're right. Like, that's not great. Like, I didn't realize that. (laughs) Anyone who is listening, particularly any legal types, do not sniff glue. Do not sniff glue. Do not sniff magic markers. Don't don't sniff things, just in general. Um, Anyway, uh, I am the Ethical Panda. You search for the Ethical Panda. Most places you'll find me. Uh, All the links are in the show notes, though. And send us your feedback. We love getting feedback from you all. Um, So good to have it all. I've been getting some more. We're going to do an, uh, the the episode we're going to do about celebration is when I'm going to read a bunch more of the feedback we've been getting. But thank you so much to all of you who are sending in feedback. Uh, and of course, yeah, let us know what you think. What did you think of Bad Batch? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Let us know. Uh, of course, you can sign up to become a patron. And if you do, you'll get access to the bonus content. There's a lot of other great things. And just also help keep the lights on. So on behalf of myself, Paul, Aaron, thank you all so much for listening. We have spoken. How would you like to come home to a bartender who will fix you any cocktail you want? I'll have an old-fashioned. I'll have a margarita. Now you can with the Bartesian Home Cocktail Maker. Bartesian is a sleek machine the size of a coffee maker that makes premium cocktails at the touch of a button. Choose from over 50 different cocktails, from classics to the most exotic premium cocktails served in the best bars today. You'll always get freshly mixed, perfectly balanced cocktails with the Bartesian Cocktail Maker. And now, get free shipping with your new Bartesian when you go to bartesian.com slash cocktail. Entertaining? The Bartesian is ideal for parties. No need to stock all kinds of individual mixers for complicated recipes. Every guest gets the cocktail of their choice in seconds. The Bartesian makes a wonderful gift for weddings, holidays, birthdays, or for anyone who loves a fine premium cocktail. And right now, get free shipping with your Bartesian purchase at bartesian.com slash cocktail. Go to B-A-R-T-E-S-I-A-N dot com slash cocktail and your home cocktail maker ships for free. That's bartesian.com slash cocktail. In the future, hosting the perfect cocktail party will be as simple as touching a button. Well, the future is here with Bartesian, the sleek, sophisticated home cocktail maker. It's hard to make drinks perfect when you're measuring and mixing by hand, but the Bartesian makes the premium cocktail you want as strong as you want it, perfectly balanced every time, all in under 30 seconds. Your guest wants an old-fashioned? They got it. 
A blackberry margarita? No problem. Bartesian offers over 60 different cocktails to choose from, made with real juices, extracts, and bitters, so your guests get their favorite cocktail without you needing to stock a full bar. Bartesian is the future of cocktails for next-level hosts. You'll serve great cocktails, your guests will be amazed, and you'll throw an amazing party. Cheers! Order your Bartesian today and receive free shipping. Visit bartesian.com slash cocktail to shop now. That's B-A-R-T-E-S-I-A-N dot com slash cocktail. At Western National Insurance, we believe in the power of nice because we know that nice is more than just a word. It's our promise of support and a helping hand when you need it most. Find out just how powerful nice can be. Ask your agent for Western National. For people living with diabetes, this is what a typical day is like. This is what it sounds like managing diabetes with the Mini-Med 780G insulin pump system. Visit MedtronicDiabetes.com slash 780G system to learn more. Systems for people with type 1 diabetes age 7 and over. Prescription required. Warning. Do not use SmartGuard feature for people who require less than 8 units or more than 250 units of insulin a day. See bit.ly slash 780G risks. Hmm. How many carbs are in this cheeseburger? I think it's 15 grams for a slice of bread. How many carbs are in these fries? Take a break with the Minimed 780G insulin pump system. You don't need to be exact with carb counts. Your best guess is good enough. Visit MedtronicDiabetes.com slash 780G system to learn more. Systems for people with type 1 diabetes age 7 and over. Prescription required. Warning. Do not use SmartGuard feature for people who require less than 8 units or more than 250 units of insulin a day. See bit.ly slash 780G risks.